previously on the district. We need those files by tomorrow. That's not going to happen. This might help to speed things up. What is this? That is a formal congressional request. McGregor, what made you come to Washington? Job I had was getting a bit scary. What job's that? There was a policeman in Belfast, so... Somebody put a bullet in an envelope under our windshield wiper. Anybody that leaves a bullet under your windshield isn't going to shoot you. My nephew's mother was killed trying to stop the father from kidnapping him. He's the only witness to that crime. Yeah, I'm Irma Coleman. I, I'm Pablito's sister. I'm Ricky's aunt. We want Ricky to live with us. Ricky's not going anywhere. Number is 522-LRA, Maryland. Now, I'm going to see you first thing in the morning. Now, you get assistance, and you get statements. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Anybody waiting here? Yeah, actually, there was a woman here a little while ago. Tall, good looking. Redhead. Yeah, beautiful. Actually, she waited a while, then stopped the cab. Thank you. Have you been on that assignment? I've been three months at the 6th District, sir. Where were you before that? Uh, the Academy, sir. And you were the only car that night in the 8th Quadrant? Yes, Joe Forbes was in the other car, but his radiator blew. Why don't you give me one reason why I shouldn't bust you off this force, officer? Sir, we had six calls before yours. One was a child abuse. Guy was going to kill his kid. I got a kid myself. I wanted to kill that guy. All right. Come on. Come on. Why don't you take the rest of the afternoon off? <clears throat> Thank you, sir. You'll be all right? Yes, sir. It was a bad night. We had two cars down on that command. What are you talking about? Well, that kid is three months out of the academy. He's manning half the district by himself. I would like him put with a veteran, somebody that can show him the ropes. That's a tough shift for quality personnel. It's prime time. It's the weekend. 85% of this department is married, most of them with children. You know how it goes. 
Those with seniority choose the shifts. It's 10 o'clock on the weekend. What do you think, the, the crooks are home watching their kids? Ella. Yeah? I want a comp stat on shift deployment, manpower stats, absentee reports. Ella, would you map the crimes in the last 24 hours, day versus night? The big crime night. The weekend. And where are the police officers at that time? So, anybody beginning to see a problem? When the crime starts going up, the cops go home. Now, this was a hit-and-run accident. A young woman was plowed into by a stolen car. She received head injuries, a couple of broken ribs. Now, I called for a radio car. How long do you think it took? 32 minutes. Ella, let's say a perp is traveling at 40 or 50 miles an hour. How far could he get in 32 minutes? Arlington, Bethesda, they're all outside our jurisdiction and people. Now that is just flat embarrassing. And the question still remains. Where the hell are the cops? Well, let me see the hands of those of you that worked the 4 to 12 shift that night. Where were you, Captain? District House Supervisor. Ah. All right, well, 20% of you worked that late shift Friday. Now, how many left the station house? We have to run the command centers. The cops with seniority have experience. I need them working when the crooks are working. Now, that's why I'm instituting a new shift. We'll call it the power shift. The hours are 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. We are going to take our power and our experience, and we are going to put it up against theirs. The shift rotations will be out in an hour. So get your gun, get your hat, and let's get out. The union requires an officer receive a 30-day notice of a shift change. Well, how long have I been here? Just about a month. Well, that's notice. Now, I warned everyone when I got here that things would change. Any Metro officer that is not notified at least 30 days in advance is awarded a penalty payment. Now, you're looking at about $100,000. This is a system that makes up for the low pay and lack of amenities that officers get. Those with seniorities get to set their schedules. It's one of the few perks we have to offer. Now, you want to keep senior officers on this force? You do this and morale will collapse. The crooks work weekend and night, so I, so the morale just seems fine. I'll pay for the overage. Thanks, Ella. Yeah. Hey! That's what happened with Sherry. Uh, well, I missed her. Oh, wait, stop. What do you mean you missed her? It was a hit and run, and the traffic got crazy, so I ended up directing some traffic. You stood her up to direct traffic? I hope you didn't tell her that. No, I tried to call her, Nikki. I just couldn't connect with her. You left a message. No, I didn't leave a message. Now, come on, i got to talk to her personally. i, I got to prove to her that I, I'm a different, you know, I'm just a different man. By directing traffic. Here, let me give you a hand. Thank you. Sure. Aren't you, um... McGregor, with the chief. Right. Sorry, I'm in a hurry. He hasn't put you on the power shift as well, has he? What's the power shift? All the senior officers have been put on the late shift. It's double overtime for everybody. Life as they know it has ceased to exist. <sighs> Nancy! Did you find her yet? Just the machine. The concierge says she'll be out all day. All right, well, let me know the minute you get her. Hey, Chief? Chief, how uh, are we supposed to pay for this new power shift? Well, see, every shooting victim costs the city $50,000. Every car theft costs them 20000 insurance on average. Yeah, but the city doesn't get that money back. Complain to Congress. Hey, who's Sherry? 
he asks me 20 times to find her, I get a machine he hangs up. They haven't talked yet? I haven't gotten her yet. His ex-wife. They never should have broken up. Why did they? She was a widow to the job. A man would rather be at a crime scene than a family dinner. Your boss is wreaking havoc on us. Fifteen years and I'm back on the night shift. It's going to be a very long week. Hey, McGregor, right? Captain Hunter, IA. How's it going? Busy. I bet. You got a transfer? Yeah. Assignment to the chief. Yeah. He's a tough cookie. Is this business a pleasure? <laughs> Everything's business. Good, good. So, what do you want? The bullet on his windshield. What do you reckon? Are you assigning me to the case? No. no. Just asking your opinion. You're questioning me? No. I'm just asking your opinion. Where do you think it came from? The bullet. Smith and Wesson. It's very funny. <laughs> your previous job. Northern Ireland Police. Wow. You shoot any IRE men? I gotta get on with this power shift. You wanna question me? You just haul me in. Don't get paranoid. Uh, Chief? Yeah, sir? Well, either one is fine. Uh... The woman from the hit and run, I went to the hospital, 50-50 if she makes it. And I just thought, if I could track the stolen vehicle and find this guy, mm. you know. What? Well, are you any good at computers? Yeah. Sit down. All right, see if you can find all the locations where we've recovered stolen cars with low jet. Okay. You mind if I ask why? Yeah, well, these guys usually like to park the cars for 24 hours to make sure they don't have low jack, and where they park them is usually within three or four blocks of the chop shop they're going to use. See, the point is, the crooks don't like to work too hard. Okay. Now, give yourself a half-mile radius around those hot spots. Okay, so I just look for auto parts stores and body shops near the recovery areas. You're a whiz kid, you know that? <laughs> Did you get a partner yet? Yeah, yeah, Sergeant Brander. Hey, why don't you get him to help you with it? Yes, sir. Good morning to all you senators and congressmen. Good morning in this, our nation's capital, where our noble mayor, Ethan Baker, schemes, steals, and whispers sweet nothings to his sweetheart, Pumpkin. Come on, Congress. Come on, Chairman Reese. Investigate, indict, incarcerate, and liberate. Liberate us, the citizens. This is DC's one true voice, PJ Hawks. You're home. Yeah. Oh, uh, good, good. I, I got a bone to pick with your people. What people? Well, you cops, some guys in 4D doing a surveillance. Yeah? Yeah, well, I give them a great deal, you know, being it's police business, but they haven't paid me, not a cent. Are they Metro cops? Yeah, Metro. So could you talk to them, please? Sure. Thanks. Congressman Ladd wants to see you this afternoon, something about a tax cut bill. What I want to know is, where are we with Mayor Baker? Well, I'm deposing Deputy Mayor Mitchell this week, so... We have something? 
Let's just say we're circling the wagon, sir. Good! Because I would like to announce the identity of Pumpkin by Halloween. <laughs> well, if she knows anything, I'll be sure to get it out of her. Oh, we derail this, Mayor. We won't have to listen to any more carping about statehood for D.C. They can't even run a city. Why should they get the three votes that a state does? Tommy's Auto Parts? Yeah, hi, I'm looking for a driver's side door of an 81 Mercedes. Uh-huh. Blue? You got anything like that? Uh-huh, okay. Okay, thank you. the kid, Chief. Five senior officers in your command did not show up last night. You want to know why? We all have demands on our lives. What do I tell 20 robbery victims? You tell them one guy has a son dying of AIDS, another guy's wife is graduating, another guy's kitchen caught on fire. Sherry came by. She left this for you. What'd you tell her? That you were out in the field. She said, of course he is. I tried to get in contact with her. She's leaving tomorrow. I have her flight information. Come in. Can I ask you some questions, Chief, for a survey I'm doing? Yeah. True or false? I seldom overschedule my days. I'm not answering that. I can answer that one. I rarely think about my work outside the job. Uh, what book is that? I spend time regularly with my family and friends. Um, this, this is Chief, your... please don't say that this is your family. What's the book? I'll Sleep When I'm Dead, The Workaholic's Bedside Companion. Did you give that test to anybody else? Nick failed. So did Danny. Ella passed. Well, good for her. Everyone needs a balance, Chief. You know, people who spend all their time at work don't make very well-adjusted officers. What is your fee, Dr. Paris? What'll I tell Sherry? Tell her I'll meet her at the airport. Play for half an hour, and then he has to finish his homework. And his bedtime is at 8 o'clock. <gasps> These are all my numbers. Thanks. You be good. Okay. Hi. Hi, Ricky. Hi. Hi. How are you? Irma, what are you doing here? He wouldn't return my calls, so... Go on up, Samantha. Wait a minute. Wait. On. Hang on. I want, to, I want time with Ricky. Go, not now. I'm, you know, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to abandon my nephew. I have a right to see him. No, you don't. I have custody. No, hang on. You have temporary custody. You're his aunt. I'm his aunt. You don't have a greater right than I. Except that your brother killed his mother, my sister. That's what you say. What do you mean, that's what I say? <laughs> He's in jail charged with murder. He says he didn't do it. Of course he did it. Who says? Ricky saw him kill her. My nephew told you that? Is that what he told you? You get out of here. No. Before I have you arrested. I got it. I know what's going on. You're polluting his brain so you can keep him. You're trying to keep me from my brother's son. Listen, your sister had a lot of men. She was killed by one of them, and you want to blame Pablito. What, you have a gun? You want to shoot me? People have rights. My nephew has rights. This is Ella Farmer. Would you send a patrol car to 16th and Fuller? Thank you. But would you at least see that he gets this? No. No. Good. Well, now we have a record of how you intimidated me when I brought a gift to my nephew. And I'm sure they keep logs of calls at your job.
How's it going? You have any uh, parts for an 81 Mercedes? Yeah, driver's side? Blue? Okay, you sure? All right. Thank you. You walk everywhere you go? No, I have to uh, go in front of a congressional committee tomorrow. Whatever you say, say nothing. This is saying where I come from. I have to answer. Says who? Is it an offense not to answer? No. So don't answer them. I, I think that makes you look guilty. That's the trap. See? You stay silent because you know these people aren't your friends. They're not here to do you any favors. You think if you stay silent, they'll think you're guilty. So you talk. And then they've got you. Hmm. You hungry? I'm on the power shift. Too bad. Yeah, hi, I am building an 81 Mercedes piece by piece, and I'm in need of a driver's side door. Uh-huh. Blue? You got anything? You do? Oh. That's good news. Uh-huh. Great. Great. Well, I'm interested. Ella, I need your help. I couldn't get anyone to watch them. My babysitter didn't sign up for this power shift. Here's another one. Set them down. I'm babysitting for six mothers and two dads. Has the chief seen this? Let's just keep the door closed. So, check this car out for me, one. It was outside my apartment this morning. It looked like undercover. Mm -hmm. hey, I need a favor. My dart club's in the state finals. I'm the best player, and, well, I was kind of hoping that... You want me to ask Manning to excuse you for a game of darts? No, it's the finals. I'm the one that's always talking about consistency and dedication. What, <laughs> I just don't show up for the big game? Forget it. You've been assigned to the hit and run. There's no way he's going to let you off. I don't see that number under active cars. Maybe it's the feds. It's not an internal affairs car, no? No. Why? Are they after you? No. Here it is. Uh, it's decommissioned. Scrapped six months ago. Yeah. Scrapped and sold. So we ask him? Come on, Phil. He'd kill me. And we have lives, you know. I'm sent out with some rookie after 15 years to find one car and two million. It's pushing us too hard. It reminds me of Kosovo. These guys, they sign up for the reserves. They end up in Pristina, and then they can't believe they actually get called up. We didn't promise them banking now. What is this? The power shift workers, Chief. The lady told me don't let anybody in here. What if I told you I was the chief of police? You don't look like the chief of police. I don't? No. Chief wouldn't wear those shoes. Have you ever shot anybody? Yeah. Shot a kid once who was making fun of my shoes. I say we need a daycare center. Our business is crime, not families. But give me one good reason why not. All right. 
police headquarters. We're going to have a daycare center. You got criminals, guns, angry cops. There's three. Well, I think it's great. No, you have a ribbon cutting ceremony. You got Manny with children. I mean, we certainly do a lot to change your image. No, I have kids. I just wouldn't inflict them on anybody else. You have kids? Yeah. Jack Jr.'s in college at Michigan State, and Beth ran away with uh, Black Hole Surfers. What? The Black Hole Surfers are a rock group. She's a groupie. A roadie. Well, we've got to do something, Chief. Or you won't sustain the power ship through next week. Bye. Catch you later. <sighs> What's wrong with you? Noisy neighbors. Do you know what Eskimos get from sitting on the ice too long? Polaroids. Well, it seems to me your Congressional Committee's sole function is to harass the D.C. government. Deputy Mayor, you're not being cooperative. What law says I have to cooperate with you, Ms. York? <laughs> oh, I can cite you several laws. Those laws say I have to be truthful, which I am being to the full extent of my ability. I see. I see. Now, you know, actually, I'm a little confused about something. Um, when we examined your computer, we found a letter allegedly written by Chief Mannion to you requesting funds for Comstad. Now, are you in the habit of writing letters to yourself from the Chief? How do you know I wrote that letter? Okay. Who wrote it? I don't know. Deputy Mayor, we have allegations that the mayor has a slush fund. We have evidence that he has dispersed this slush fund. Is there a woman that he calls Pumpkin? Do you know who Pumpkin is? No. You have no idea? No. Your father, his name is Owen Mitchell. Correct? Surely you know the answer to that question, Miss Mitchell. Yes. And he owns a construction company. Correct? Yes. Right. And how many contracts has he had with the city? Perhaps you didn't hear the question. This is ridiculous. What does my father have to do with this? I see. Suddenly you want answers. Now, I really think it's best that you cooperate. Thanks for nothing. What? The dart game. I told you I couldn't ask him. Yeah, well, I thought you'd at least try. There are district reports for Chief Manning. Thank you. Do you hear me? Hello, do you hear me? Hello? Shut up, will you? Stop going on about your bloody darts. Go catch a thief and stop whining. Temper, temper. Who was the guy who was just at your desk? A detective from the third robbery unit. Wants to see you. Send him in. Hey, Danny, how you doing? I'm gone. Wait a minute. What's wrong? You could have at least have had the guts to tell me to my face. Oh, wait a minute. You get back here, you sit down, and you state your case respectfully. Respectfully? Dedication? Loyalty. You know what? I bought it. What are you talking about? You're investigating me. What? You've got a surveillance team across the hall from me. 
Hey, come on! Did Hunter tell you I was out to get you, did he? All right, you go take a walk to calm down. I'll get back to you. Nancy, get Hunter back here. Chief Manning would like to see you in his office, please. Thank you. We have to do something. This ship rotations, kids running everywhere, all this tension. Enough is enough. Could you just wait one minute, Captain? Chief, I know what you're doing. What am I doing? Please. I do my research. I checked with Newark and with Boston. You know? Yes, I do. I learned it from Tacitus. His men only wanted to march 30 miles a day. He demanded 50, so when he made camp at 40, they loved him. <laughs> well, I just saw that 40-mile marker outside. All right. Well, I have to deal with Hunter and McGregor, and then let's get together and organize camp. Good. Captain? Thank you. Are you investigating McGregor? No, sir. I spoke to him about the bullet on your windshield in passing. Why? Because I want to get to the bottom of it. And there isn't any surveillance on him? No. Is there any other surveillance I should know about? No. Can you tell me if there were? Unless you were the subject, sir. Right. Okay. Now, I want this bullet investigation terminated. Whatever you say, sir, but may I ask... No, did you hear me? Yes, sir. Did you get my message to Sherry? Yes, sir. She told me to tell you that the ship is still at sea. I'm going to call her back. Tell, tell her I'll meet her at the gate. You. In here. Okay. Now, I talked to Hunter and IAB... He assures me no one is watching you. I saw two natural cops in my building. They told the landlord they were doing surveillance. One of them was in here earlier. That's why I thought it was you. What's his name? I'm checking, Chief. Let's go. Farmer? I'm looking for Ella Farmer. Yes, can I help you? Here. It's a subpoena to appear before the adoption board. Served to you on behalf of Mrs. Irma Coleman. Never know what. Who's operating in this town? Spies, assassins, political operatives. Well, you think this guy's a killer? You think somebody's out to kill you? It's a long story, Chief. This is your son. What's his name? James. Am I ever going to get a chance to meet him? Not until he's old enough to make his own mind up. Yeah. It's tough. It's life. You know as well as me. That's like Sherry always says. Some of us are meant to be at sea.
What's going on here? What do you mean? Well, you told uh, the landlord you were doing some surveillance from here. Oh. <laughs> no, we're... We're not. We, um... We, uh... Well... We were, uh, just having a meeting, sir. Johnson? Is that you? These cops, see, they like to dress like women. They needed a place to meet, so they told the landlord they were doing some surveillance. And that way they could cover the flow of men. Then one of them forgot to pay the rent. Wait, are they cross-dressers or are they transvestites? What is the difference? Well, I mean, cross-dressers like the... I mean, trans... Never mind. How's McGregor? Is he all right? Uh, he doesn't know what's worse, you know, having a surveillance team living across the hall from him or these men and women people. Oh, are you going to bust them? Well, they're suspended for a month. Their pay will be docked till they pay back all the rent. Aside from that, and I say live. Let live, you know. Did you come up with the right combinations of vets and rookies? Yes, sir. Is the union on board? Apparently, men of the offices have discovered the joys of going to bed at 3 a.m. and having the day free. Well, out of chaos comes order. Tacitus. No. Jack Manning. We should get back to the station. We deserve a break. Your old man, you can cut me a break. And I don't want to screw up again, okay? Fifteen years I've been throwing the same darts. I never missed a game. Oh, man, that's good soup. Hey, there they are. Green are the crimes reported uh, pre and post power shift. Now I'm happy to report the numbers show a 10% across the board reduction in crime. In districts one and three, we had a 15% decrease in homicide and a magnificent 30% decrease in car theft, all capped by uh, the busting of a major car chop shop by uh, Sergeant Phil Brander. Phil, would you stand up? Sergeant Brander and his partner, Seth Delaney. Now, their work also led to the arrest of the hit-and-run driver. And for all of you, I want to thank you. Now, you're going to be happy to know that uh, we have restructured the rotation, so we're going to be teaming senior officers with rookies in a one-to-four ratio. Now, we'll still be able to maintain our high profile on the power shift, but we're going to be able to return most of you to your original shifts. So. The subpoena. I'm to appear before the adoption board. Okay. Now, Ricky loves you. Any judge is going to see that. I don't think it works that way, Chief. They don't go on emotion. I think they go by all the practical things that Irma has. Nice home, stable family, parenting experience. Oh, what the hell's wrong with him? Chief, you got to go or you miss Sherry. Go on. Right, okay. All right. Wait, wait. Uh, you're sure you're okay? I'm fine. Ella, 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 look. Your old office in the basement. Now, that would make a great daycare center. Chief. Go. The flight's in 40 minutes. No, I got 15 minutes. No, it's Dulles, not National. Good evening. I have a request from the committee. Oh, uh, well, why don't you just see my assistant? It's for your calendar. And your budget records. We need them tonight. 
Oh, you do? Afraid so, yes. It's a formal request from the committee. Oh, well. All right, then let me see if I can't help you. My, you are a busy woman. Do you like movies? Yes, I love films. Uh, did you ever see The Untouchables with Sean Connery and Kevin Costner? You know what? That's one of my favorites. Sean Connery, he's just so, um... Well... <laughs> are you saying that my staff and I remind you of The Untouchables? No, no, that's not it. Um, Nancy, would you make sure your desk is locked and my office door is locked? Now, there's a line Sean Connery has in the movie that uh, applies to you. Never bring a knife to a gunfight. Now, if you want something that belongs to me, then bring a subpoena. Then we'll fight. Okay. See you. Hi. Mr. Pierce, you seem to be a somewhat sensible man. You could save the department a whole lot of pain. Well, our threshold for pain is pretty high. Good night. Good night. made it. I was 12 minutes late, but there, uh, you know, I blew it. Uh, I swore I wasn't going to leave one of the, leave the message, leave the machine thing, but I really wanted to see you. I wanted, I wanted to dance with you, to hold you, see your face. I to tell you that I'm trying to change. And I, uh... I'm trying to be the man you deserve. I want to make... I want to make something out of this love we have for each other, Sherry. And to... Uh, to prove to you that you are the most important thing in my life. But you're right. I'm still at sea. Please wait. Please wait for me. This is the Biography Channel. You want to be yourself, but you're not allowed to be yourself. This is the Biography Channel. I was just beside myself with anger and disappointment. This is the Biography Channel. I'm the only actress he knows you have to pay to keep your clothes on. Reality meets personality only on the Biography Channel. Biography Channel. What a concept! Previously on The District. We need those files by tomorrow. That's not going to happen. This might help to speed things up. What is this? That is a formal congressional request. McGregor, what made you come to Washington? Job I had was getting a bit scary. What job's that? It was a policeman in Belfast, so... Somebody put a bullet in an envelope under our windshield wiper. Anybody that leaves a bullet under your windshield isn't going to shoot you. My nephew's mother was killed trying to stop the father from kidnapping him. He's the only witness to that crime. I'm Irma Coleman. I... And Pablito's sister, Ricky's aunt. We want Ricky to live with us. Ricky's not going anywhere. One, one. 
good, good. Hold up, hold up. You people, get on the sidewalk. Come on. Just stay right there. Okay, get back. Get back. Back up. Back up. Where the hell are the cops? Go. Come on. Come on. Good, 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 good. Well, what the hell took you so long? No, buddy. What'd you say to me? Oh, you want me to spell it out for you? Chief, right. this has been a hit and run. The license number is 522-LRA, Maryland. And I'm going to see you first thing in the morning. And you get assistance, and you get statements. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. See anybody waiting here? Yeah, actually, there was a woman here a little while ago. Tall, good looking. Redhead. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, she waited a while and then stopped the cab. Thank you. Have you been on that assignment? I've been three months at the 6th District, sir. Where were you before that? Uh, the Academy, sir. And you were the only car that night in the 8th Quadrant? Yes, Joe Forbes was in the other car, but his radiator blew. Why don't you give me one reason why I shouldn't bust you off this force, officer? Sir, we had six calls before yours. One was a child abuse. Guy was going to kill his kid. I got a kid myself. I wanted to kill that guy. All right. Come on. Come on. Why don't you take the rest of the afternoon off? <clears throat> Thank you, sir. You'll be all right? Yes, sir. It was a bad night. We had two cars down on that command. What are you talking about? Well, that kid is three months out of the academy. He's manning half the district by himself. I would like him put with a veteran, somebody that can show him the ropes. That's a tough shift for quality personnel. It's prime time. It's the weekend. Eighty-five percent of this department is married, most of them with children. You know how it goes. Those with seniority choose the shifts. It's ten o'clock on the weekend. What do you think, the, the crooks are home watching their kids? Ella, yeah. I want a comm stat on shift deployment, manpower stats, absentee reports. Ella, would you map the crimes in the last 24 hours, day versus night? The big crime night. The weekend. And where are the police officers at that time? So, anybody beginning to see a problem? When the crime starts going up, the cops go home. Now, this was a hit-and-run accident. A young woman was plowed into by a stolen car. She received head injuries, a couple of broken ribs. Now, I called for a radio car. How long do you think it took? 32 minutes. Ella, let's say a perp is traveling at 40 or 50 miles an hour. How far could he get in 32 minutes? Arlington, Bethesda. They're all outside our jurisdiction, and people, now that is just flat embarrassing. 
And the question still remains. Where the hell are the cops? Well, let me see the hands of those of you that worked the 4 to 12 shift that night. Where were you, Captain? District House Supervisor. Ah. All right, well, 20% of you worked that late shift Friday. Now, how many left the station house? We have to run the command centers. The cops, with seniority, have experience. I need them working when the crooks are working. Now, that's why I'm instituting a new shift. We'll call it the power shift. The hours are 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. We are going to take our power and our experience, and we are going to put it up against theirs. The shift rotations will be out in an hour. So get your gun. Get your hat, and let's get out. The union requires an officer receive a 30-day notice of a shift change. Well, how long have I been here? Just about a month. Well, let's notice. Now, I warned everyone when I got here that things would change. Any Metro officer that is not notified at least 30 days in advance is awarded a penalty payment. Now, you're looking at about $100,000. And this is a system that makes up for the low pay and lack of amenities that officers get. Those with seniorities get to set their schedules. It's one of the few perks we have to offer. Now, you want to keep senior officers on this force? You do this and morale will collapse. The crooks work weekend and nights. I, you know, the morale just seems fine. I'll pay for the overage. Thanks, Al. Yeah. Hey! What happened with Sherry? Uh, well, I missed her. Oh, wait, stop. What do you mean you missed her? Well, it was a hit and run, and the traffic got crazy, so I ended up directing some traffic. You stood her up to direct traffic? I hope you didn't tell her that. No, I tried to call her, Nikki. I just couldn't connect with her. You left a message. Oh, I didn't leave a message. Now, come on, I gotta talk to her personally. I, I gotta prove to her that I, I'm a different, you know, I'm just a different man. By directing traffic. Oh. Here, let me give you a hand. Thank you. Sure. Aren't you, um... McGregor, with the chief. Right, sorry, I'm in a hurry. He hasn't put you on the power shift as well, has he? What's the power shift? All the senior officers have been put on the late shift. It's double overtime for everybody. Life as they know it has ceased to exist. Nancy, did you find her yet? Just the machine. The concierge says she'll be out all day. All right, well, let me know the minute you get her. Hey, Chief. Chief, how uh, are we supposed to pay for this new power shift? Well, see, every shooting victim costs the city $50,000. Every car theft costs them 20000 in insurance on average. Yeah, but the city doesn't get that money back. Complain to Congress. Hey, who's Sherry? He asked me 20 times to find her. I get a machine, he hangs up. They haven't talked yet? I haven't gotten her yet. His ex-wife. They never should have broken up. Why did they? She was a widow to the job. A man would rather be at a crime scene than a family dinner. Your boss is wreaking havoc on us. Fifteen years and I'm back on the night shift. It's gonna be a very long week. Hey, McGregor, right? Captain Hunter, IA. How's it going? Busy. I bet. You got a transfer? Yeah. Assignment to the chief. Yeah. He's a tough cookie. Is this business a pleasure? <laughs> Everything's business. Good, good. So, what do you want? The bullet on his windshield. What do you reckon? Are you assigning me to the case? No. no. Just asking your opinion. You're questioning me? No. I'm just asking your opinion. 
Where do you think it came from? The bull. Smith and Wesson. It's very funny. <laughs> Your previous job. Northern Ireland police. Wow. You shoot any IRA men? I gotta get on with this power shift. If you wanna question me? You just haul me in. Don't get paranoid. Uh, Chief? Yeah. Sir? Well, either one is fine. Uh, the woman from the hit and run, I went to the hospital. It's 50-50 if she makes it. And I just thought, if I could track the stolen vehicle and find this guy, mm. you know. What? Well, you any good at computers? Yeah. Sit down. All right, see if you can find all the locations where we've recovered stolen cars with low jet. Okay. You mind if I ask why? Yeah, well, these guys usually like to park the cars for 24 hours to make sure they don't have low jack, and where they park them is usually within three or four blocks of the chop shop they're going to use. See, the point is, is the crooks don't like to work too hard. Okay. Now, give yourself a half-mile radius around those hot spots. Okay, so I just look for auto parts stores and body shops near the recovery areas. You're a whiz kid, you know that? <laughs> Did you get a partner yet? Yeah, yeah, Sergeant Brander. Hey, why don't you get him to help you with it? Yes, sir. Good morning to all you senators and congressmen. Good morning in this, our nation's capital, where our noble mayor, Ethan Baker, schemes, steals, and whispers sweet nothings to his sweetheart, Pumpkin. Come on, Congress. Come on, Chairman Reese.